You mash, you chew you up for brunch And finish you off for dinner or lunch They're marching down the halls They're crawling up the walls They're gooey, gushy, squishy, mushy, rotten to the core They're standing outside your door Remember Herbert Farbage while taking out his garbage He turned around and he did see Tomatoes hiding in his tree Now he's just a memory I know I'm going to miss her A tomato ate my sister Sacramento fell today They're marching into San Jose Tomatoes are on their way Vacation. The governor's fed a nation. The police have gone on strike today. The National Guard has run away. Tomatoes will have their day. Attack of the killer tomatoes. Attack of the killer tomatoes. They'll beat you, bash you, squish you, mash you, chew you up for brunch, and finish you off for dinner or lunch. Lunch, lunch, dinner or lunch. Increase, look again, Harry. Not blood. Tomato juice. The tomato crop continues to grow at an unprecedented rate. Within the last 12 hours, we have received a number of unconfirmed reports from throughout the nation that may or may not be connected with this strange phenomenon. Hmm. hmm. Sure doesn't taste like tomato <coughs> juice. Look at the jack tomato, Martha. I didn't know they'd grown so big, Jeff. I wonder where he's going. He got little Timmy. Poor Timmy. Get him all up. <laughs> Tomatoes. Tomatoes can't fly. Yeah, they can't eat people either, but they're doing one. All right, I've got question. Jim, go over there and talk to that sheriff and find out what the hell's going on. Get over here. How bad is it? Well, sir, I definitely don't think it'll fly again. I'm not talking about that, you wiener. What about the tomatoes? Oh, well, we found two more bodies near the main road, but we pushed the tomatoes back to the north end. I don't think any managed to bust loose. They better not have. I want this thing contained. I understand, sir, but nothing seems to stop them. We tried chemicals, bugs, bullets. Nothing seems to work. 
Look, the president wants a complete investigation. We can't let this out. People will panic. That's what. You know whose ass is on the line? Yours, mine, and the entire look ag out, department. Look out. What if the president wants an investigation? He'll get his investigation, but we'll keep it quiet. I've arranged for the most obscure generals, the most obscure scientists, and to head the investigation. This man. I don't recognize him. Nobody does. His name is Mason Dixon. He hasn't worked since the Bay of Pigs. Is there any sign of the problem elsewhere? Not yet. I've ordered the entire GD3 program shut down. Wait a minute. Isn't that Jim Richardson, the press secretary? What's he doing here? The president's got him keeping an eye on the investigation. Why him? Because he's got a vegetable garden, that's why, with peas and carrots and squash and tomatoes. That sheriff tells me there are reports of incidents like this all over the county. Oh, bullshit. One nut spots a flying saucer, and pretty soon everybody's shaking hands with little green men. God, who would have thought? All we wanted was a bigger, healthier tomato. Look out, here he comes again! Where did you get this one, General? Oh, I won that one in a three-legged sack race last Armed Forces Day picnic. What's the matter with General Number Two? Oh, he was out all night on maneuvers. Let him rest. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, gentlemen. Would you follow me, please? Certainly. Oh, General, would you wake up, please? This room, gentlemen, it's, it's, it's uh, all I can do on such short time. <sighs> now, are, are we all here? Where's Jim Richardson? The press secretary? Yes. Uh, perhaps we can give him a few more minutes. General. I've been meaning to ask you, have you heard anything about the Nuclear Strike Force Tactical Training Command meeting? You mean Operation Nishvik? That's right. Not really. I've been following the personnel proficiency planning for Pago Pago Paratroop Platoon patrols. Oh, Operation... <laughs> What's the poop on? <laughs> Moving well. Did somebody mention misfits? No. Ah. Well, then, uh, Mishkonk must be pretty well wrapped up. Gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Oh, yeah. Uh, now that we're all here, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Dr. Morris. Doctor. Thank you, Captain. Major. Uh, pardon me? Never mind. <clears throat> well, as um, I'm sure you're well aware, um, this tomato problem has caused considerable concern within the scientific community. Scientists from throughout the uh, nation have uh, directed their attention to this very vexing problem with only limited success. However, with the help of Dr. Fuji Nokatafa, we believe we've made a breakthrough. Gentlemen, may I present Dr. Nokatafa? How do you do, Doctor? Very well, thank you. Uh, Dr. Nokatafa, would you uh, please explain the project to the gentleman? Gentlemen, what we have developed is, in essence, a half-man, half-robot, a very sophisticated combination of human intelligence and superhuman powers, which we are confident will result in the ultimate destruction of the enemy. Uh, thank you, Dr. Akpapa. Are there any comments, gentlemen? Uh, Mr. Platt. As head of the Federal Intelligence Agency, I certainly don't mean to question the background of these fine gentlemen. But frankly, I don't think the answer to this problem lies in trinkets and gadgets. This is man versus vegetable. Technically, sir, tomatoes are fags. He means fruits. Ah, fruits. You see what I mean? Mr. Dixon. 
I've been authorized to assign you four of my best agents. Gentlemen, with your permission, I'd like to introduce Mr. Dixon to his operatives. That's fine, Mr. Platt. In the meantime, the rest of us will accompany the doctors down to view a demonstration of the latest anti-tomato project. We'll be going outside, Mr. Dixon. You better bring your coat. There's a little jap in the air. He needs nip. entails the development of limbs with superhuman powers. Unfortunately, budget limitations have restricted our development to only one of these technologically advanced legs. Okay, brutes, now let's try running first. Uh, that, that'll be fine, Bruce. That'll be fine. Uh, Bruce, please uh, jump for us. Despite some minor recruitment difficulties caused by a recent PR problem, I believe you'll find that your unit will meet the highest of standards. Hey, Chuck. Your men, Dixon. Sam Smith, disguise expert. Greta Attenbaum, swimming expert. Greta defected to us after the last Olympics. We feel she's gonna be quite an addition to the department. Greg Colburn. Underwater expert. The fourth member of your unit, Lieutenant Finletter, is winding up his current mission. He'll contact you at these coordinates. Expect him at 1000 hours. Good luck, Dixon. Waffles on every issue? Oh, right on. We'll never have another president as bad as this one. Daniels, I realize that in the past there have been some questions raised regarding the president's use of public funds for what some may consider personal items. However, I can say without fear of contradiction that under no circumstances and at no time has the current administration expended any public monies whatsoever for the purchase of the fluffy flower print toilet paper. Now, if there are no further questions... Thank you, Mr. Press Secretary. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary. Just a moment, gentlemen. One more question. The little fellow in the rear. Bobby Drake, sir, PS149. I have a question, sir. Certainly, young man. What would you like to know? We've heard nothing at all about the growing tomato menace. Tomato. Correspondents around the country have been asking about I... that. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call it a menace, young man. There have been some isolated uh, reports of alleged incidents involving some unusual activity associated with this uh, particular vegetable. Uh, but I assure you that uh, this is not and never will become a, a menace. However, the president, leaving no stone unturned, has 
called upon our most noted congressional leaders in this field to begin a thorough, intensive, painstaking, and exhaustive investigation into the backgrounds and origins of this interesting quirk of nature. Uh, furthermore, you can assure all of your young readers that this will never become a problem that Americans need fear. This, uh, this meeting of the Senate investigating committee is called to order. Anybody remember what we are supposed to be investigating? The tomatoes, Wayne. How's that? We're investigating those tomatoes. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Yes. Um, well, here we are. There's, there's one for you, one for you, one here for me. One for you. That's funny. There's supposed to be one for everybody. The way it could be. Good morning, City Herald. May I help you? Roberts! <laughs> sir. Get me Goldstein. Well, he's still in Beirut, sir. Beirut? He's fired, sir. Oh, yeah, give me Johnson. Hurry, sir. He's covering that trial in Texas. Ah, oh, cripes. Okay, just get me anybody in this special assignment desk. They're all on special assignments. God damn it, who the hell is here? Well, uh, there's you, sir. Thank you, you. Wait a minute. There's Fairchild. Who the hell is he? She. Sir. Uh, Lois Fairchild, society section. The new kid? Society, huh? Oh, what the hell? Send her in. Now, damn it! Funky little tomato. <laughs> Where are we going? Take the old mission road. Some crazy ass biker's got himself munched on by a herd of tomatoes. So what can we do? We can keep it quiet, that's what. Didn't you hear the police radio? It's solid tomatoes between here and Holtville. We're liable to get killed. Well, you can it, you little putt puller. John Q. Public finds out what's really going down. We're both as good as dead. Fairchild, sir. Hmm? Fairchild. Will you send for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Have a seat. Fairchild, I've been keeping my eye on you. You've got a good sense of organization. Thank you, sir. Fluid style. Thank you, sir. Sharp mind. Thank you, sir. A nice ass. Thanks. I'm about to give you a challenge, your first big assignment. And I expect you to use every attribute at your disposal. I'm sure that what you lack in experience, you'll more than make up for in determination. Now, this will give you the necessary background to handle the assignments. Go to it. Right away, sir. Now, uh, one more thing, Fairchild. I'm certain the government will go to unbelievable lengths to ensure the secrecy of this thing. Do you read me? Do you read me? Go away! Go away! Do you read me? Do you read me? Are you happy now? Have to the goddamn secret. Nobody knows where the hell we are. Do you read? Do you read? Help me! Oh, for God's sake! Give me that for God's sake! Will you keep it down, for God's sake? You can't tell me to shut up. I quit. What? I you quit. can't quit. The department of the department. I'm gonna die. Will you can't see the little asshole be I'm gonna die. Oh, 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 o
frankly, I was not overly impressed with the level of competency displayed by the scientific team. I haven't seen Dixon's special forces unit yet, but if it's anything like what I've seen so far, I'd say we're in for a bit of trouble. I know what you mean, Jim. I know what you mean. It's like trying to stack vitals on whipped cream. Yes, sir. Jim, an unusual problem calls for an ingenious solution. I think I've got one. Jim, have you ever heard of Mind Maker? Well, certainly, sir. The advertising agency you used in your campaign. That's right. You know, they said I'd never get reelected, especially after it got out that I used the Statue of Liberty as collateral on that Arab loan. Yes, sir. But I'm sitting here now, and I owe it all to Mind Maker. Incidentally, Jim, you were in the Mideast last summer. Tell me, how does the old girl look in the Dead Sea? Just grand, sir. Good. Well, I tell you, Jim, if those fellas could elect me, they can do anything. Yes, sir. Jim, I want you to fly to New York immediately. I want you to see Ted Swan. Believe me, the man's a genius. I'm on my way, sir. <laughs> No comment. American public has a right up, to know. Up and away! You can't ignore the press. Dixon! 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 Hey, guys, here it is, the song everybody's been asking for. Bonnie Desmond's Puberty Love. I want to hear the news. And today, the president closed the nation's last remaining submarine base at Groton, Connecticut. When asked why he had made the startling decision, the president responded, those funny little black ships just keep sinking anyway. And in other news today, in Newark, New Jersey, a man was eaten by a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Finlander, huh? 
I'm Mason Dixon, and this My is... My God! It's Adolf Hitler! <laughs> is Sam Smith. He's our undercover expert. He's only disguised as Adolf Hitler. Guten Morgen, Herr Hitler. Autobahn! Reckon Sie Deutsch? Wiener Schnitzel! Get in the back seat! What about me, Mr. Dixon? What about me? You? You? You go disguise yourself as a tomato and infiltrate their camp. Mr. Richardson to see Mr. Swan. Yes, sir. He's expecting you. I'll let him know you're here. Please have a seat. Mr. Swan, Mr. Richardson is here to see you. He'll be right with you. Jimbo, buddy, how are you? How you doing? Fine, I am. Super, super. Hey, the president tells me you have a situation, Jimbo. Well, let me clue you. You boys have come to the right place. Let me give you a peek at Mind Maker in action. First, we have to convince the little housewife out there that the tomato which ate the family pet is not dangerous. No problem. Then we have to convince local authorities that the thousands missing from rural communities were merely stranded during their bicentennial pilgrimage to Philadelphia. No problem. Third, the president wants us to do this in such a way that it can be covered up and no one will know it ever happened. That's no problem. But then he wants us to do this and convince 200 million Americans that this disaster is actually a blessing. Now, that's a challenge. I understand what you're saying, Mr. Swan. The president is a very demanding person. Sometimes he expects the impossible. But I, I never said impossible, Richardson. What I said was that it was a challenge. Man was put on this earth to meet challenges, my boy. You really think you can do it? Can I do it? <laughs> can I do it? <laughs> Some sell, some buy, and only we know why. The rapper's more important than the prize. Important decisions are made each day. Much too important for the plain folk to make. They're always in a bind. Depend on us to help make up their mind. A red box, blue box, a red box, and a blue box. Bright colors and a coupon on the side. Sell a salt, sell it's all the same. Millions of dollar bills are spent every day. Where do they all go? My maker's here to run the show. We sell cars and toys for girls and boys and chairs and beds and shrunken heads. Sugar beets and baseball cleats and ice to Eskimos. And leaks and mink and boats that sink no matter what we'll get it sold. Catchy jingles, snappy tunes, and pretty girls with big balloons. A little lie, a stretch of truth can turn the public's head. There's TV types and ad execs, and everyone's the best at the end. They all look up to a single man, and that one single man is me! <laughs> They buy, and only I know why. The human mind is putty in my hands. Important decisions. 
decisions are made each day. Much too important for the plain folk to make. They're always in a bind. Depend on me to help make up their mind. Decision-wise, policy-wise, demographically speaking, mind maker. Well, let's go meet that challenge, young man. I've already put my staff to work, so if you'd be good enough to stop by in the morning, we can take a look-see at some of the preliminary sketches. Roll it! Then I can tell the president that you'll accept the assignment. Keeping a big city on the move <laughs> you is no small booties. task. Traffic cops all over the country meet this challenge day to day. This man is like any other policeman anywhere in the country. He works hard and takes pride in serving people. Yes, he's a policeman just like any other, except for one thing. He is blind. This has been a public service announcement produced for the National Health Foundation. Sir, I really don't think this is a good place to camp. We're not sleeping on the sidewalk. You see that big building over there? It's called a hotel. You and I are going to sleep in the hotel. No campfire, sir? No campfire. Well, then what am I supposed to do with these marshmallows? Room. I'm going to check for messages. Be up in a minute. Yes, sir. Pardon me. Do you have any messages for Mason Dixon in room 401? presents 21 Great Deadbeats. You get the best of Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Otis Redding, Buddy Holly, Jim Croce. It's the Evening News with Charles Collingsmith. Substituting Turn that for thing Carl off, will you? Let's get some sleep. Substituting for Marshmallow? Hmm? 
What? Where? I'll be right there. Breakfast, sir. No time. But your vitamins. I don't know. No time! Now listen, this is important. You gotta go down and warn Greta that there's tomato activity in sector two. You got that? No matter what happens, you tell her. We yes, sir. We this program to bring you a special bulletin. The following is an NBS hotline bulletin with Douglas Keekler in New York. NBS, the network that brings you the news as it happens, brings you these bulletins in times of emergency. The news you need to know when you need to know it on NBS, the network of the news. This NBS news hotline bulletin is brought to you by Schritz Beer. You're never too drunk to ask for Schritz. And by Bright Gums, the toothpaste for people without teeth or dentures. And by... Gosh, Billy, I don't know. You stay there. I'll go look. Spot? Spot! What are those red circles, sir? Those are machine gun emplacements. We've got the whole valley surrounded with them. I don't think we can hold them very long, though. And that green line, that's their furthest point of advance. That's right. Uh -huh. What are the blue dots? Those are mobile stations. Oh. Well, that must be Major Mills. Take over. Yes, sir. I'm glad you could make it, sir. I think we've got something that will interest you. So I've been told. Dixon and I want you to see this. Captain? Yes. Sir, we've captured a giant tomato. gentlemen, that what we have here before us isn't what we thought. You don't mean... This? May God help you. The cherry to me.
Mr. Dixon has ordered me to inform you that there's tomato activity in your sector. That's my question. Right. For me. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we've been going great bananas. Hey, sit down, make yourself comfortable. I ask myself, what do we need? Something original. Something that strikes at the very heart of the matter. And here it is. My maker at its best. Who can argue with that? Giant tomatoes mean bigger pizzas. Rolling on two. If you're feeling sad and blue, tomatoes end it all for you. Last year, more people were killed by automobile accidents, heart attacks, lung cancer, and natural causes combined than by any one tomato. Pretty classy, huh? With a capital K. Right, and Mr. Secretary, being a public relations man yourself, you understand the value of symbols. Well, we have spent a great deal of time and effort and over a million dollars to create a symbol which will wage this battle. An effort which will become known as the Stop Tomato Program. I see. It all looks quite extraordinary. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll be on my way. Just a moment. One more thing before you leave, Mr. Secretary. I'd really like you to see this. It's something I've worked on for many years. The culmination of years of effort. The world's ultimate commercial. Roll it! I, Jesus Christ for Technotron. Slot. Last night, tomatoes attacked Los Angeles, Boston, Seattle, Chicago. Even the mere mention of the word is sufficient to induce panic. Tomato. More news of the hour. Now back to the rocking sound of the Boomer on Super 101. All right. Man, this was something. Hey, everybody, I want to say something to you now. Governmental cooperation in what is obviously an affair 
best suited for international action. This is a question best left to the people, for whom there is no spokesman greater than those who speak the least. I therefore call to Then I put my foot to the floor, and I, I got out of there as fast as I could. It was all very strange. I, I just don't know what to think. You made no unusual motions of any kind? Not to my knowledge. Odd. Well, were there any loud noises or rather extraneous activity which uh, might have affected the Tanetti's behavior, such as uh, an airplane or, or another car in the vicinity? I'm almost sure there wasn't. You'll excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, I really have to be getting back to Washington. That's fine. Uh, give my regards to the president. I'll do that, Captain. It's major. Of course. Priority one message for Mr. Dixon, sir. Oh, phone call to you. Oh, thank you. I'll leave one of those for my records, oh. too. I need one for my files. And don't forget the major. Now. <laughs> his assistant, but that's getting me nowhere. Followed? By who? Following who? His assistant. A spy. A spy? That's right. Well, what's he look like? Medium height, medium build. It's a she, sir. You know, the strumpet last night. The one with the big... Guns and a sword. With long blonde... Parachute. Sunglasses. Combat boots. And a dress. Nothing suspicious about that. <laughs> you can't be serious. So what shall I do? Look, I thought I made it perfectly clear. I don't think you've made use of all your potential, if you know what I mean. Look, you're obviously tired. Why don't you go take a nap? You mean go to bed? I couldn't do that. Why not? You're a woman. I resent that. I didn't say that you were incompetent. I just think you could use a rest. Yes, sir. But I... well... I'll do my best, sir. Goodbye. 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 Operator? Operator, I, uh, I've gotten the wrong number. I'd, uh, like my dime back. Hi there. Hello. Listen, uh, about last night, it was an accident. I really didn't mean anything. It was a dark night. I mean, uh, the lights were off and it got dark. Uh, I mean, it was dark. And it was lighter earlier. You want to go to bed? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I, I got to go to bed. I think you've made use of all your potential, if you know what I mean. Of all your potential, 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 potential.
I, uh... I was right. I was right. A spy! Warren Greta? Uh, yes, sir. And she was already dead. It figures. Point of view. Did you have any relatives in Wyoming? Say again? Arkansas, are you sure? Arkansas. What's the situation? Our intelligence tells us that the tomatoes are massing for a final all-out attack upon the nation. Now, our top brass wants us to concentrate our forces here on the coast. We can hold them here, we can win. Not. Is there anything I can do, Major? Yes, the President wants your personal report. You call him on the red line at 1100 hours. Be back here tonight. We need every man we can get. Damn it, Dixon, this is war! Very good, sir. Sir, I, I think somebody's shooting at you. Well, where do you think he's going? Ah! We have no choice but to make our stand out west. 
I want you to make sure that our military people out there in that region understand and are aware of their enormous responsibility. I'm sure they are, Mr. President. By the way, have you seen Jim Richardson out there? Uh, just briefly. Oh, how's the ad campaign going? Excellent. My mail's running 30 to 1 in favor of the tomatoes. Terrific. Oh, God, I almost forgot. Shirley? Yes, sir. I want you to get General Mitchell on the line. Tell him to bomb New York City. But, Mr. President, the tomatoes are not even close to New York City. Listen, you worry about your problems, and I'll worry about mine. Yes, sir. Is that the last pen? Yes, sir. Oh, thank God. Hey, will somebody please pass the ketchup? Ready, Major. As ready as they'll ever be, Dixon. You know, Dixon, a man stops to think at a time like this about his home, his wife, his kids. You married, Major? No. Me either. I wonder what the tomatoes are thinking about right now.
across the length and breadth of the nation, the tomatoes continue on their rampage of wanton destruction, burning, <coughs> pillaging, <coughs> raping. <coughs> Let's shoot it from over there, huh, Bill? Uh, come on over here, lady. Stand by over here for just a minute, huh? Okay, don't go away. We start with a tight shot, huh, Bill? Tell me when you're ready. Don't run off. Across this great nation, almost everyone has been affected in one way or another by this terrible tomato onslaught. Mrs. Williams, I understand your husband is missing. Yes, Do you he think is. he's dead? Well, I, I Will you miss him? Well, I Will you marry well, again? Ah! You will be laying in a ditch somewhere, like with both his legs broken, calling your name. You will have to find another man, you know. You're no spring chicken. What are you going to do, Mrs. Williams? Can you answer my question? Please look into the camera, Mrs. Williams. Get away! Get away from me! But your house is... Last night's crushing military defeat may spell the end for humanity. The shattered remnants of a once proud civilization lay scattered amidst crushed spirits and broken bodies. Lawlessness is rampant, panic stalks the streets, and personal grooming habits have reached an all-time low.
Good afternoon, Mr. Dixon. Had a pleasant nap? Richardson, I'm not surprised. Mr. Dixon, I didn't really think you would be. That's why you're here. What do you intend to do with me? Mr. Dixon, don't be so naive. You're the only one with the knowledge that can stop me. Don't be a fool, Richardson. You don't have a chance. You know very well I do. You know, it's funny, Dixon. No man sits closer to power than the press secretary to the president of the United States. And yet as close as it is, that power is never really within your grasp. It dangles before you, taunting, daring, mocking your very impotence. I will not be mocked anymore. I will no longer give other people's answers to other people's questions. The answers will be mine. The questions will be mine. Everything will be mine. It'll be glorious, Dixon. It's too bad you won't be around to see it. What makes you think that you can control these tomatoes better than anyone else? Questions, questions. You missed your calling. Mr. Dixon, have you had lunch yet? Here, have a tomato. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's really quite small and quite harmless. It's from my garden. You might say that I'm in tune with my tomatoes. At the proper time, when all vestiges of authority have disappeared, I shall charge in on my white stallion and save the nation. Now, what's left of it? My fellow citizens will be eternally grateful. At the very least, they'll surely choose my benevolent leadership over the obvious alternative. It shall be my golden moment. But, Mr. Dixon, I'm afraid these are your final moments. You're awfully confident for a man who has failed twice. Three times. But who's counting? I don't think you can do it. You know, Dixon, you may be right. I've never killed a man before. You may be right. <coughs> who's there? UPS package for you. Come in. Then again, you may be wrong. Wait. Before you pull that trigger, tell me how you do it. Really? How melodramatic. Very well. It's really quite simple. You see, all I do is... Real bad apple, sir. It's a good thing we got. Everybody's left town. The only people left would be crazy. I don't care. Just do it. Move. Sir.
further action be taken at this time.
I want to thank you for saving my life. Just doing my job, lady. Well, I guess there's nothing more to say. Bye, Mr. Dixon. Goodbye, Miss Fairchild. Lois. Lois. Goodbye, Mr. Dixon. Mason. Mason? Lois? Oh, Mason! Lois. Mason. Lois. Mason. Lois. Lois. Mason! You guys, they've gone now. 